sum of the first n terms of a geometric sequence. Here's some additional examples. All right, in this question, they're giving you two um, sequences and asking you to find their sums. So we know these are geometric sequences. We can see that it's following a geometric pattern. This one's being multiplied by two to get from one value to the next. And this one is being multiplied by a negative one fourth. And so we're gonna use the geometric um, sequence formula for the sum. So this, this is this formula here. So we need to know the first term. We need to know the common ratio and how many terms we're gonna to add together. So in this one, the first thing I do is I think, okay, this is term one, this one's term two, this one's term three. And see, I can see the term number relates how it relates to this exponent. So that means if this is a six, this is six terms. So in this case, n is gonna be six. And the value of my a sub one term is this value right here. This is a sub one. And my r value, I can see I'm multiplying each of these by two to get to the next value. That's the value that I'm raising to the exponent. Okay, so r is gonna be two. So then I'm gonna plug this into the formula. The sum of the first six terms equals the value of the first term. That's my a sub one, that's two. Times the quantity of one minus r, r was two, and n was six. And then this is one minus r, which is, again, two. Okay? And so now I'm gonna need to do order of operations and simplify this. So I've gotta do the exponent first. Remember when I have this, all of this is divided by, it's like having a big parentheses around here and a big parentheses around here. So I'm gonna do this exponent and so I get 2 times the quantity of 1 minus 2 raised to the 6 power is 64. And then I'm going to go ahead and do 1 minus 64 and 1 minus 2 next. And this gives me 2 times um, 1 minus 64 is a negative 63. And 1 minus a negative 2 is a negative 1. And so a negative divided by a negative will give me a positive. So I have 63 times 2, which is 126. So this is my answer for part A. Now I'm going to use the same formula for part B. Okay, so I need to know what these values are. Now for this one, you're going from the first term to the ninth term. So n is 9. The value of the first term is I can replace k here with 1, so that gives me 3 times 1, negative 1 fourth to the first power. So that's 3 times a negative 1 fourth, which is a negative 3 fourths. Okay, so this is my a sub 1 value. Now you can see what's happening here is each time I calculate a new term, this k value is getting bigger. So this value inside of where I'm what I'm taking the exponent of is my common ratio. This is what my pattern's being changed by each from one term to the next. Okay, so I've got my values that I need, so I'm gonna plug this in. The sum of the first nine terms equals the first term, which is a negative three-fourths, times 1 minus r, r was a negative 1 fourth, and I'm going to raise that to the nth power, n was 9, and in the denominator it's just 1 minus r, and r is a negative 1 fourth. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is raise this to a um, negative 1 fourth to the ninth power. So I'm taking a negative 1 to the ninth power, and that's going to give me a positive 1, well, negative 1. And then 4 to the 9th, that gives me 262,144. So do that on my calculator and I get that. So I'm going to have 1 minus that here. I'm going to pull out that negative 3 fourths here 
times all of this. And in the denominator, I'm going to have 1 minus a negative 1 fourth. Well, when I'm subtracting a negative, that's the same thing as adding a positive. Okay? And I have the same thing up here. I have minus a negative. I'm going to change that to plus a positive. Okay? I need to add these two fractions together. In order to add them together, I've got to have a common denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this 1 into 262,144 over 262,144. So I'm taking this and I'm going to rewrite it as this. Because isn't that equal to 1? Yes. So I'm adding these two together and that's going to give me 262,145 because I'm adding this 1 to this. So I'm going to have a negative 3 fourths times, and then this fraction here up here, I'm going to have 262,145 over 262,144. We're going to do something similar here to the denominator. I'm going to take this 1 here, and I'm going to turn this 1 into 4 over 4. Okay, because 4 over 4 is equivalent to 1, and I have a common denominator now, so I can add the numerator parts together. 4 plus 1 is 5, so I'm left with 5 over 4. Now what we have here is a complex fraction. So I have this value here divided by this value here. So remember, I'm going to change my division here to multiplication and flip this fraction over here and multiply them together, basically. So I'm going to end up with a negative 3 fourths times 262,145 over 262,144. I'm going to end up multiplying that by 4 fifths. Now right away I can see that these 4's can cancel out. And I can see I can divide this by 5. So I would take this value here and divide it by 5. Okay, so 5 divided by 5 is 1, and this value divided by 5 gives me 52,429. And so then I'm just going to take a negative 3 and multiply it by this 52,429. And that's going to give me um, a negative 157287. And my denominator will be this 262144. Okay, and that's your answer for part B.